no man's an island, except when he's having a bath. But what if a man was an island? What if you could isolate some men and ladies from the world? Six years ago, I advertised for volunteers to come and stay at my isolated mansion. Perhaps for a bit, perhaps forever. My name is Dr. Lovett, and this is my asylum. and they're not claiming it. Hi. Then you should be interested in my experiment here. Imagine a painter and decorator being surrounded only by Renaissance art or a politics graduate and allowed them only to watch daytime television. A bug-eyed bank clerk and allowed him only to listen to Lenny Bruce records. How about a flamenco singer made to take a vow of silence? Look, I'm going to say this once more and once more only because the words are sticking in my mouth like conkers. You know, I only came here to deliver a pizza, don't you? Oh, beef magic, yeah. You ordered it, didn't you? Oh, no, not me. I'm a land man, Michel. Yeah, well, I'm telling. The pegmeister is sending you down. A cup, cup of tea, tea Simon. Simon? Oh. He's quite a feisty one, isn't he? Welcome to New York. Nurse. You wanted me, Doctor? Yes, sit down, nurse. On your lap? No, on the seat there. Nurse, please. Thank you. I've decided to end the experiment and to let the inmates return to their normal lives. Why? It's boring. I sort of figured that out after the first couple of weeks, but I didn't like to say anything. What about us? But you like playing doctors and nurses? Not really, no. Who is she? Who? Come on! Who is she, the other woman? It's Martha, isn't it? Martha? Oh, no, so it's Adam, isn't it? Adam? No. Oh, I see. I've seen the way you look at Victor in the group sessions. Victor? I don't even look at Victor. Exactly, it's so obvious. What's he got that I haven't? A beard? You find beards attractive? They're okay. I can stop shaving, Doctor. Fine. But I don't love anybody. You see, I just want to end this experiment. I don't understand how all this works. I can't even get comfy in this chair. I don't like playing the doctor. I don't understand the workings of the human body. I don't know my arse from my elbow. But you've a lovely arse, doctor. Have I? Look, I've just got to go home. Then you leave me with no alternative. Nurse, what are you doing? Don't worry, doctor. I'm not going to inject you. Oh, thank goodness for that. Injection's too good for you. Hello, I'm Claire McFadden. I'm a psychiatric nurse. I live in Surrey with my husband Ted and my children Sandra and Eloise. They're both into dance and drama. I don't force them into it, you know, they just don't get their dinner if <laughs> they don't go to their dance lessons. I recently actually went down to uh, London uh, to do an audition for Oliver, um, but they didn't get it. I said, why? Is it because they're Scottish? And um, she said, no, it's because they're too fat to be orphans. I said, <laughs> what do you mean? Orphans can be fat. They just eat because they're unhappy. And then I punched her and walked out. But I, I think it's important to set that kind of example for the children, you know. Children they've got a tight fist to hold on to. Yes, because my husband's hopeless. Just a big fat streak of piss, really. <laughs> we joke about it, we call him a big lumpy fat smelly arsehole. You say, why don't you move out, Ted? Fuck off, you know. <laughs> I don't think it takes it to heart, you know. Anyway, that's me. Don't you like me? I make good coleslaw. Oh, talking of TV, you know Jeremy Beadle's program? You know they've got a hidden camera and they set someone up to believe their car's been smashed up and just as they're going to lose their mind, Jeremy appears from nowhere in a traffic warden's outfit with a fake beard and dark glasses on, right? Real beard underneath, but... 
<laughs> I never saw the point of that one, right? And he goes like this, right? He goes, well, he hides, doesn't he? And he goes, and they go, Ugh. and then they hug him. Hug Jeremy Beadle. Well, you wouldn't want to shake his hand, would you? Anyway, if I was a traffic warden, I'd carry around a fake beard and glasses so I could have a laugh at genuine accidents. You can do it. Just picture a bloke who's driving along this brand new car with his wife and kids. He stops by a newspaper and from inside the shop he hears, <laughs> looks outside, skip, landing on his car. My car! My, my wife! My car! My life! My, my, my... Um, uh, beetle gig, aren't you? No. Oh, you couldn't do it though. Also, I've got a theory, right? The whole life, the whole existence, from the moment you're born to the moment you die, is one huge episode of Beatles about. And when you die, you go to heaven, which looks like this room, and God, who's that big beetle in the sky, sits you down and on a big screen, plays your whole life back on video, and in the corner is a little box with a picture of you going, oh. I'll tell you what though, one game show, every country I've been to has had blind date. Same situation, bloke behind a screen, three girls. These are European countries, and I just wonder what it would be like in places with different cultures and beliefs, like India. Join us after the break, where we'll meet the lucky guy whose parents get to choose one of these three women. Or Saudi Arabia. Join us after the break, and we'll meet the guy who gets to choose five of these 15 women. Can I look at you? No, it isn't quite finished. Hmm. Anyway, just imagine blind in Saudi Arabia. Well, I admit, it's made your mind up time. But before you do, here's our brain. Here's Simon. 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 Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Martha Old Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Close to death. Really? How close? Oh, I don't know. Hours, minutes, seconds. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I'm definitely before Crystal Rose. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, yes, yes, yes. Young boy like you, casual for your prime. Me? Yeah. Didn't you know we're all gonna die? Why? Well, uh, it's the air. First it was a toothpaste, then it was a stamp, and now they poisoned the air. Who? They. The only thing you can say this is uh, squash. And it's only so long before that's gonna run out, so. At uh, 25 past four, so. Got any lemon? No, I don't think, I don't think they do lemon. <laughs> Dr. Lovett? Oh, Dr. Lovett, I think he's a wonderful man. Um, gentle, kind, very soft hands, very warm breath, very um, gentle, very good at his job. Um, I don't know what I'd do without him. Well, actually, I do, I do, I do know what I'd do without him, actually. <laughs> This is the way it's going to be from now on. This is the way it should have been from the start. You in a proper cell. Nurse, I was only joking. I don't mind it in the doctor's office. I could bluff my way for another five years, no problem. Too little, too late, doctor. Look, let me out and I'll give you a nice kiss. Sorry, that's just not good enough. Let me out and I'll give you a good scene too on the floor. You just don't get it, do you? The only reason I wanted you is because I couldn't have you. Jesus, only married Ted so I could have an unrequited crush on you. So I'm not your petit pois then? No. I'm sorry. You will be, when I come back later to kill you. No rush. 